we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Our God, we know we are not as a result of biological mistakes. You propose it in your heart. You had a meeting before we were created. All other things, you were just speaking. And they came to pass. But when it came to creating a woman here, a man here, creating me, you said, let us make man in our own image. All other things, they had no dominion. But you gave us a mandate. You gave us the authority. And you gave us your own very life, which is the soul that we carry today. The soul that can never die. The one that will stand before you to give account. Animals will not give account to you. But we, because we carry your very life, because we have been given a mandate, we shall stand to give account. Now, Lord, we therefore ask that now that we are alive, help us to fulfill our mandate. Instruct our hearts unto wisdom. Drive away fully from our hearts and give us enough wisdom due for this season that can match the pressure in the world, that can help us to stand to the end. This we ask from you, that you release your word with fire to enlighten us this morning. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be seated. I'm happy to come your way today again to share the word of the Lord with us. Today is day 16. And the topic, according to the manual we are using, is evidence of faith. Giving, giving. One of the evidences that you have faith is what? Is giving. We have seen people, mothers, who give birth to children. And they will, because they have no faith, they have no hope for tomorrow, they have no faith in the future of the child. Some will cast the child in a gutter. Some will just throw the child away. Uh, I watched a, a short clip. A lady in Ugale, Ugale that side, she in Delta State here, she gave birth to a baby. She herself was not very strong. She had bow legs, she had little deformity, but she could walk, but very slowly. She gave birth to a baby, and the following day, people were asking her, where is your baby, where is your baby? She said, the baby is sick, the baby is not fine. Okay, we could help you. How can we help you? They now discovered that she strangulates the baby, heads the baby's throat, killed the baby, and put the baby in a sack bag, in a sack and threw the baby away because she had no faith in the baby, in the future of the baby, even no faith in the God that sent the baby into the world. All she could do, well, no future, this is a body, this one is a biological mistake, let me do away with this one and live on my life and enjoy my life as a, la as a young lady. She killed the baby. She refused to give her time. She refused to give her motherly care. She refused to give her breast milk. Do you even know that killing a baby of two, year, two days old, eh? just two days old, the mother will suffer eh? because she needs a baby to feed on her breasts. And because there is no baby, there will be complication. God had given her this milk free of charge. She refused to use them to feed a baby she did not buy. 
She did not do IVF to get the baby. She was just playing, not married, and God just gave her the baby. She had no faith in the future of the baby. The free things she had, she refused to even give them to the baby for free. Evidence of faith. When we have faith in the future of our children, we invest in them. Our reverend yesterday, Reverend Mukoro, made a statement during the uh, home cell review class. He said, a, a lot of parents will say, I have a project, I have capital project, capital project, and they refuse to give their children time. Forgetting that, that the number one capital project of every mother and every father is who? The children. So people go and look for money. By the time they come back, where's the money of the children? I mean waste. Where's the money of the children? Because they refuse to see the children as their number one capital investment. The children become problem to them tomorrow. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Faith goes with love. You can't have faith in the one you do not love. If you love somebody equally, faith develops. I mean faith in the context of hope and trust. It develops naturally. Jesus said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. If you love God, you will have your faith in him. You will just believe and just trust him. There is nobody that can love like children. Children, they love their parents. Infants, children, their love is so much. So much. To the extent that whether the parent is blind or even in the public, they say, mommy, 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 wait for me, mommy, mommy, wait for me. But when they grow up to adulthood, they may use system to say, uh, Understand that I'm calling you. Please come, come. They will be ashamed to call the person mommy. Maybe because she is blind. Mama Nawati. Mama Nawati. Your mother will always remain your mother. Your father will always remain who? Whether he's a drunk or whether she is poor. In fact, some of us, our parents became poor because of us. Some refused to work. I became full housewife because they wanted to give us good motherly care. Praise the Lord. Believing that when we have money equally, they have become rich. If you tell a child, up there, baby jump, they will jump. And you tell them, give me this money. I remember when we used to uh, celebrate Christmas, people used to send me message, send me on errand, and they give me money. Whenever I call mom, mama take uh, how much is the money now? She will calculate it for me. So, okay, when it's Christmas, I'm going to buy something for you. I will be so happy. Christmas will come and the money will be nowhere. When I say, Mommy, hey, you, uh, the money you said you will use to buy Christmas clothes for me, she will ask me, Hosanna, have you been eating in this house? <laughs> say yes. <laughs> hey, you will pay me my money or you will pay me my money. This is not the agreement. So, he said, okay, I will pay you, but on one condition. I am going to calculate all the money I spent on you. All the food you'll be eating in this house. Do you know that even the next minute, I could still trust her and give her my money? Hold it for me. That is how loving a child can be. When you have faith in your mom, you just, the love flows and you give. Love, faith, giving, they go together. Let's read our text, page 49. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. What? Press down and check them together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that ye met with that it shall be measured to you again Luke 6 38 the second test here 
Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I had a dream today. In the night, I had to read this book of meditation. Early hours of this morning, as I woke up, I was just praying, okay, God, I want to go and preach. What do I tell your people? I had a dream. In the dream, we were in a service, so it was time for offering. So I gave 200 naira. One of our reverends was behind me. And he gave a thousand naira note. When I gave my 200 naira, I was kind of, yes, um, my offering is not bad anyway. My offering is not bad. But breeze, it was like breeze blew. Eh? And I was able to see his offering. And there, was, there were 200 naira notes on the ground. Somebody hurriedly dropped offering and the money spread on the ground. So I was able to see the amount of money the person gave. I didn't see the person, but I saw the offering on the ground. So I picked the money. There were about three 200 naira notes, three or four, stick together. Yeah? Those ones did not spread, but there were other notes spread on the ground. Two 200 naira notes. So I picked them, I put them in the offering box. And I also saw the 1,000 naira of the reverence uh, offering. So I asked myself, what is the difference between this reverend salary and my own? Why am I happy that I have given so much when I give 200 naira and the reverend is giving 1,000 naira notes? New 1,000 naira notes. One of our reverends here. So... As I woke up, I told myself, since this year, God had been talking to me about offering. Some time ago, I told myself, um, how can I give 50 naira offering? I can't give 50 naira offering. Okay, my offering cannot be less than 100 naira. I mean, when you say, like, program like this, just give your offering. But as we entered, I think it was uh, New Year Day, the Eve, eh? the Eve, or the New Year. I had a revelation, and God told me, Hosanna, your offering should not be less than 200 naira, you have money. Your offering should not be less than 200 naira, you have money. That is what God told me. So, within me, do you know that, humanly speaking, I did calculation for the length. I said, eight, money and evening, money and evening, uh, two times, which is 400 naira, and then uh, times 80. I mean, uh, 200 times 80. Me calculating offering for God. May God forgive me all. Kairo, Kairo, Kairo. Kairo, Kairo, Kairo. Equipe Jesus Iwiri Onfotare Ababare Iwiri Kekokero Equipe Ni Jesus Iwiri Onfotare Ababare Iwiri Kekokero has ever been in trouble before? Probably sickness. If they ask you to give half of your life, all your earnings, if an angel appears to you and tells you, listen, this sickness, you are going to die. But you could just sacrifice. If you like, give everything you have. And then you wake up from the dream. Will you not give everything you have? We have a kingdom we need to invest in. Venerable Dr. Tobisa was telling us a story that he went abroad as he was abroad. Uh, he 
visited, uh, okay, I think uh, it was a uh, pilgrimage. So he and a reverend father were the priests in charge of their groups. You know, they do devotion. So as they were giving offering, he tried, he brought money and wanted to give. And the reverend father said, no, you don't need to give. We have given our lives to God. So you don't need to give offering. In fact, when they bring the offering, we'll share it among ourselves. We've given our lives for me. I've given up marriage. I've given up children. I've given my life. I'm God's property. They're supposed to give to me. I don't need to give back to God. <laughs> you have given your life to God. There is no need to give money again. Is it biblically correct? Paul gave his life. Gave up marriage. He gave up his office, his good name. It was more difficult to go to school there than now. How many universities do you have there? It was more difficult to go to school then. In fact, then, you want to go to school, you go and stay with your master. Who would teach you? Have you forgotten the sons of the prophets? Eh? That were staying with Elijah. Stay with Elisha. They go and stay there. Like a seminary today. You give up everything about your life. Paul gave the whole of his knowledge to God. The whole of his position in Judaism to God. Yet he was still a tent maker. There is an English word we call tent making in ministry. Tent making means something you do alongside, support yourself in ministry in order to raise money for yourself. Paul was giving everything. He gave everything and he was still a tent maker. Supporting himself. He was the one paying his own rent. Upon all the imprisonment he suffered, Paul gave everything. The evidence of things not seen. Heaven is meant for everybody that has a free gift of life. Everybody that kept their garments clean. But the rewards in heaven are not the same. Some will be great some will be small in heaven one heaven but different positions if it had been a bible study class i would have taken time to expatiate on this but we are talking about giving jesus said upon of all men born of women there is none greater than who greater than john but the least in the kingdom of god is greater than he that means there is hierarchy. The work we do on earth is what we are going to reap. The passage we read said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. Shaking together and doing what? And running over. Some of us we are born in church. We have been working for God, singing for God. In fact, some people church we appreciate sometimes, they will say, well, I don't need it. Take the money back. I'm supposed to give back to the church. Church don't appreciate me. We have people like that in this church. And then, save God from that time, we have people who are Dalsisa board members, who give the whole of their time, who are secretaries, they send text messages with their money. Every time, sell servant. Who are sell servant here? Home sell sell servant. Raise up your hand. How much are they paying you? Don't you spend money to call for review class? You spend money to call your home sell members. You cannot compare yourself with the criminal that repented on the cross. That guy never worked for God. Every time Jesus will be preaching, he said, I beg, let this man go. What is he saying there? Boy, let's go and rob. 
they would go and rob and destroy and kill and maim people, destroy people's destinies. But a day came that this man met with Jesus. The one he never had the opportunity, the, the hardness of his heart never gave him the opportunity to listen to him. That day he saw Jesus and it was the last minute of his life. He said, you, I'm going to tap that life you have been preaching. I've overheard you over the radio. I heard you over the television. I heard you over the internet. But today that I've met with you, I am going to test that life. And if you can give it to me, I will be so glad. And he told, he rebuked the other man and said, are you not afraid? We have been robbers. This man we know. You know that this man is innocent. He was unjustly killed. We deserve what we are receiving now. And he turned to Christ and said, Lord, remember me. In your kingdom, that kingdom you have appreciated, though I was never baptized, though I never worked for you, but in that kingdom, Lord, remember me. Jesus looked at his face and said, You, today, today, you will be with me where? The only work the man did was just two. Two. He had to believe. Do you know it costs you something before you can believe? It, it costs you removing what you already believe in you. Reprogramming your mindset and replacing that thought of disbelief with belief. With your new belief. That man did that eternal work. And then lastly, he also rebuked the man. He preached Jesus on the cross. And then he requested. So if we were to count the work the man did throughout his lifetime, as far as Christianity is concerned, and the little picture we have about him, we would say it was just on the cross. Would that same man receive the same reward as you are? Yeah? Will he receive the same reward like you? Teachers, when you mark people, don't you, even if somebody uh, does so well and the handwriting is very clean, you, he has all the marks. You want to add more marks to the person. And the, when somebody impresses you so much, you want to make sure you distinguish the person. Even writes or comments, keep it up. Praise the Lord. There is a reward for everybody on earth. Everybody will receive their reward. You can't compare our daddy here. Me, there are things I learned from him. There was a day we were saying something and he said, Osana, learn from me. This is mentoring. Learn. You people should learn from me. You know, there are some things that uh, a student may not be able to accept easily. But the master will say, accept them. Don't worry, move on. That is how the ministry is. He spends his time attending to people, different, different people. And you know, some people, they know how to talk so much. They will, if instead of saying, I have a headache, they will start from the day they were born. And he will be patient, just listen to all of them. Monday, he has his own rest, and he'll not even complete rest. People will be calling, and Tuesday, he's up. Wednesday, divine encounter. Do you know Tuesday, we still have prayers here? Yeah? After our meeting, it's prayer. Wednesday, divine encounter. Thursday, counseling. Friday, barriers. Saturday, weddings. Sunday we have church services. And in the evening you're supposed to rest. You go for home set. He goes to home set too. You want to compare him to somebody who sits in the office with private jets, cross his leg, he's taking hot tea here, and his tummy is like this. The rewards are different. Some people will do the work of God like office job. Just ordinary office job. Upon all this one he does. Nothing is added to his salary. 
Nothing. Not even one. So people will see us as a and say, oh, boy, now they enjoy you. The enjoyment for now. Eh? Let me ask you one question. How many priests have you seen transfer to cathedral and they started adding weight? Have you seen anyone? Mention anyone? No? It may be 20 years ago, but now. Nah. Have you seen anyone? Answer me. Okay, you are thinking first. Eh? It's permitted you can think. Have you seen anybody transfer to cathedral and they started adding weight? Eh? Say, are there no cathedral members in this place? Sometimes you have no time to even eat. But we believe that God is going to reward us one day. One day we will stand before the presence of this God and he will say, welcome, good and faithful servants. What are you giving to God in the house of God? What do you give? What do you give to your God? Go up. You are free. Take permission and go up and go to where they can't cathedral money. 2020 Naira, 2020 Naira, 2020 Naira, the people, the, 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 the stewards and the protocols cutting money, they would remain there to fall. Counting 2020 Naira. Cathedral, the population has overflowed the building. But the offering is not growing. I'm telling you the truth. You are a member. You, at least uh, every year we give reports of total income and expenditure and balances. To so the extent that we had to, when I came here, there, are, there is a way we enjoy light. We had to be, we had to manage and readjust some of our benefits. We have to remove them and make sure we adjust and adjust and adjust so that the church will not collapse financially. It's affecting us. But we have people. Somebody could just meet you on the road. One witch with color could just meet you and tell you, eh, "Madam, so something is happened to you. You need to sow seed, and your heart will fly like a bird." You go and look for all your money and pour, pump into that criminal's life. People could just go and wash their faces and start seeing. I can't find all those four one niners on the streets anymore. Many of them are putting on color. Many of them are the prophets that attend to some of you. You could easily pack money and give to them. But when it comes to church, this is a building that our forefathers put in place for us. How many of us take care of this building? We don't know what giving is. One year, a couple, eh, a husband and wife in this cathedral came and they went around, gave us little, little money, bought anchor sheaves. Eh? Anchor sheaf. You know anchor sheaf. Bought a kashif and spread among the priests and gave to us. But do you know that anytime I pick the hakashif to use, I pray for them. How much is one hakashif? That the role of the whole of that hakashif cannot be more than 700 naira. But the spirit with which they did it, I pray for them. Each time I pick the hakashif, I pray for them. Hakashif. Let's open our Bibles to Mark. Chapter 14. If you read from verse 2 to 9, I want to read verse 9 alone. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that he had done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. A woman took alabaster box containing costly perfume. She broke it upon Jesus and the whole house was full of this is a perfume you don't break perfume we don't supposed to break you apply perfume you don't break and pour perfume you apply it little by little you manage it any little drop is enough for the day some would serve for months some for many days some will still be serving but this woman consume it once poof and people became angry. But Jesus said, leave this woman alone. You don't understand the things of the spirit. If you have understanding about the things of the spirit, you would know that this woman had just prepared my body for burial. 
and that wherever this gospel is preached all over the world, it will be made mention of her, for a memorial of her. And everywhere the gospel gets to, even to Jesus will return. This woman, we don't know so much, so much, so much about her job and everything about her, how rich she was. But it, the money, the cost of the perfume, cost months of salaries of people. How many of us are ready for heaven? If you know it is a kingdom, you will invest your life and invest your properties. How many people die in church and they will properties to the church? How many? I've only seen it was not even a will. Somebody died and the properties were there. They said church should come and collect. So they brought the properties to the church. How many people, how many Christians die and will their buildings to church? How many? The church is struggling. Boko Haram is not struggling to kill. They have so much money. Look at uh, the money, the budget of can for a whole year. Eh? In Nigeria, is what they give to a singular suicide bomber. And he would go and blow himself up. But we are here complaining. Eh, we don't know what is happening. Well, how can you have? Listen, let me tell you the principle of giving. Even if an unbeliever practices giving, he would also receive the reward of giving. Because it is not tied to Christianity alone. It is a universal law. It's a natural law. I had a revelation recently. I, I was praying and I saw a big truck. You know truck? This vehicles are used in moving goods. It had very little tires tied to it. Small, small tires. And God said, this is my people. This truck represents my people. They want to have big blessings. But they don't want to have big tires. Because they don't want to rub their body against the ground. Do you know it costs a vehicle's tire pain to move along the road? Eh? It is friction. It's pain. You crawl, the tire crawls on the road. And God said, these are my people. They want to have big blessings, but they don't want to pay the sacrifice for the blessing. You want big blessing? I am blessing the morning, I am blessing the evening, Abraham blesses Abraham. Stop seeking it. Can you do what Abraham did? Eh? Every morning we go to the cow and we take milk and you don't give the cow grass. You don't give the cow milk. Uh, you don't give the cow treatment. You don't give the cow water. One day you will get there, milk the cow and the cow will chase you and kick you out. Just test this truth within you. Some people, their makeup is more than what they give to God in a month. Do you believe me? Eh? When you are lying helpless before the doctor, anything they tell you, you do. People don't complain. How many of us have gone to the chemist shop and you say, Madam, miss it for me. Eh? Body pain. Miss body pain for me, not be pain relief. Miss body pain for me. As I miss and for you finish, you begin to ask. You know, we don't price drugs. Eh? I've taken my time to reason. Any amount they call for you, you just pay and you go. You don't ask, uh, this white one is how much? Because we are, don't even know the names. This one is how much? This one. You don't ask. You just miss 20 naira's all for me. They could give you the one of 20 ni 12 naira. And you are happy and you're gone. But when it comes to offering, we run around and begin to look for change. And... May God deliver us. Be on your feet. We need to take some decisions, make some decisions this morning. Me, I know there is nothing good about this world. I was talking to somebody that had it been I'm up to 70 years old, I would have been very happy in this world. 70 or even 60, I would have been very, very happy. Because every system in this world is crashing down before our very eyes. The people are eating and drinking. People are so happy building houses. Forget about their souls. Forget about their kingdom. Forget whether the church is crashing or not. It, this, 
this thing would have changed it many years ago. Is it today that Katida has been leaking? Eh? But no money. Close your eyes with your two hands lifted up to God. Tell the Lord, Lord, take my life and let it be. Consecrated unto thee. Take my moments and my days. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Sweet and beautiful for thee. I consecrate my life to you. Lord, take my life. Use my life. Who wants to promise God that from this moment, this is how much I will be given in the house of God. I will never be given 20 naira to God. 10 naira, 15 naira. You know you have money, you are looking at your neighbor who has problem. Who is crying that God, if I, had it been I have more, I would have done more. And you look at the person's offering and you are just your own. Oh. In Islam, they don't only give what they have, they give their lives. Believing that there are virgins somewhere, when there is no virgin anywhere. Talk to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to support your kingdom from this moment. I'm not going to be foolish like the five foolish virgins who did not take enough oil to the Lord. They were virgins, they were qualified, but they could not enter because they were, they, they were so complacent. They were so relaxed. They could not take enough oil. It doesn't matter. We can even get there. What is your plan? What is your budget for the church? What is your budget for your kingdom in heaven? Your home in heaven. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. Where I am, there you will be also. Round up your prayer. Father, thank you for your word that we have heard. We we'll pray that you will help us this day. To love you and to practicalize the love through giving. In Jesus' name we pray.